Hi and welcome to another video. In this video I just wanted to go through on using the new AMTM uh, feature. Um, so this is where it's a third party um, and you can see here on the right hand side uh, a list of different uh, other supporting scripts or little mini programs I like to think them as uh, give extra features um, to the Merlin firmware that you've um, upgraded to or change over from the stock firmware on your Asus router. Um, as you can see here, there's a few going down the list. And again, there's descriptions on each of them. So I won't go into much detail. But I just want to give you a quick example um, of how you can actually get this installed um, um, on your uh, Merlin um, router, uh, Asus. So in this example, I'm using my GTAX 11000. Um, so this is within the um, web interface. So I'm using Chrome. Um, and as you can see, I've gone into uh, administration and then system tab. And as you can see here, you've got your, so you'll need to log in using um, something called uh, SSH client. Um, so I've downloaded um, one called Putty. It seems to be the easiest. Um, and I'll put a link in the description as well. Where you can download it and it's quite a small little program and straightforward so as we can see here what we'll be needing is the username and password for our router and before we get started I'd advise that you perhaps well like I have done is I've installed a um, USB uh, memory stick into the back of one of the uh, two USB ports on the router that on my particular router has so that's a 32 gig and then I've also formatted it in uh, in compatible format, and that's ext4 um, for this router, um, so it recognises it um, because some of these programs, is, uh, well, they call them here on scripts, actually use the USB storage to store files and databases. So I would best before you do anything here is to plug in and get that formatted your USB dr um, drive. As we can see here, as we said, we need your router login, your password, um, and what you'll need to do is enable this one here. So when I first got it, both of these were no. So what you'll need to do is enable this JA, uh, JFFS custom scripts and configs. So that just enables a partition. So you'll be able to um, install these custom scripts here, as we see on the right hand side. Uh, once you've clicked on yes, you can hit the apply save settings at the bottom of this screen um, it'll, it'll probably refresh or restart the router and then you can come back to here and once you've done that um, what you'll need to do is to make sure that you've enabled the service down here so again this is under the um, administration um, and then as we can see here administration and system tab um, so as you just scroll down and then you'll be able to find here at the bottom enable SSH so you have a choice to open it up but of course for security I'd never open up to the WAN um, so best leave it to a LAN only so it's only your local clients can get access um, I've left this off um, and then the um, SSH port so that's the port that we'll be putting over here that we connect to uh, I've just randomly put a number in there um, instead as it says for security use a different port than the default port of 22 that's normally here um, is recommended to avoid any port scan attacks so that's when like normally um, outside uh, bots are scanning for open ports on your network and if you accidentally leave it open at least if you leave this on LAN only and you've changed this port it reduces the risk um, of anyone getting in and everything else because this can get um, if they've got your username and your router password they can get into um, like uh, root access uh, on your router so again as we said here um, I've got this is the default here and in an ideal uh, idle time of uh, 20 minutes so you can disable it by putting zero in and then once you hit apply that will basically apply these settings um, just make sure you've got all these switched on and as we said so now we've got them information we need to come over here and type it into our putty so if we come over here, then we can type in the router's um, IP address. That's your internal one. So normally the default one is 
16850.1 and again that port number that we changed it to um, so that was this and again so you simple as that you just type that in and then you click open and as you can see here um, now it's asking for your login um, so I'll just quickly log in and we'll come back so now I've logged into the router with my username and password um, and you can you see here that it now says uh, home and root and then um, so you can go into anything you want for command base so as we're talking about this we want to add on some of these scripts here and the particular script I'm looking at is Skynet so that's like an extra fire uh, firewall so that you where you can block IP addresses uh, certain countries um, using geotagging and there's lot quite a few advanced features um, and then also block lists that you can download um, that they have as well so as it says up here this is currently from version 3 384.15 um, AMTM is also included in the firmware now so you don't need to install it or anything like that and the current version I believe is uh, 386 point something so I think it's uh, whether version you're downloading currently as of the 9th of April 2021 um, it will include this so all we're going to now is we have to it's quite straightforward just type in AMTM and you'll see the screen come up here so if I just so as you can see here it's got different features that you can do so you can format disk and it tells you what letters you need to do so we want to see all available scripts or tools so I want to type I enter and then it'll give you a list as you can see here of options that you'd like to install and as we said we're interested in Skynet uh, the uh, router firewall so that's number two so I just type two as you see it's quite straightforward and they've made it really uh, user friendly even though you have to go for a command interface like this um, I think they've tried to cater for people like ourselves uh, to make it as straightforward as possible so you've got one for yes and e for exit so I go for one and as you can see here now it's going through some kind of setup so it'll first of all ask you about this is where I was talking about the uh, having a USB drive in um, actually connected to the router um, because it's important because this one will have a database and it or a swap file I think I believe that they call it um, so that needs to be stored somewhere and it needs to be stored on um, your actual USB drive so as you can see here it will ask you please enter the partition so I've only got one you can see my 32 gig USB drive so I just hit one and it will say what type of traffic do you want to filter and it also gives you recommendations so I'll go with the recommendations and it's saying here would you like to enable logging and again recommendation is yes and I think the point of logging is that at least you can see if any um, stats and monitoring of blocked IPs and, and where it's coming from and things like that so that's a really good feature to have and it's saying here um, would you like to enable mail uh, malware uh, blacklist auto updates and of course you would want the most frequent so it's one it's yes daily so you get the most up-to-date information for security and it's like would you like to enable weekly Skynet updating of course you want to keep the program up to date and it's got here as well the Skynet auto update enable and schedule for 1 25 a.m. every Monday so it's early in the morning so um, best time and hopefully everyone's asleep or the routers you get under less uh, um, stress so you've got um, here you've got a choice of one or two and I recommend two so I've got a 32 gig in here so that's fine so I hit number two and you can see now it's creating the swap file so it's like a database where it's going to store all the lists and the updates and everything else where it will um, basically help filter out um, what's happening and everything else and block anything that's coming in or outbound uh, using your uh, router so as we can see here why it's creating that uh, you can see along here the um, the actual owner and you can, it will take you here to, if you click on the link 
it'll take you through to the uh, forum link as well so it gives you more information um things like that so and again it's full of these as well so i'll put a page um, url in the description and you can have a look through to see if any of these are more relevant for you again there's some quite good ones um, for dns um, so you can set up so so you can set up um, tls or ssl um, for your um, for your dns um, and then also you can set up again some extra uh, guest wi-fi details so it's quite good so as you can see here on the left hand side it's all updated and it's scrolled through and it's done so now you can see there skynet is installed uh, and it's basically the module has been downloaded so it's gone back to the main screen and as we can see under here the version number and it says you know we can open it up if need be and if you want to ever uninstall it so again so if you do want to uninstall any of these that you have after you've installed it you think well i don't really need it anymore or i'm having issues then um, you can uninstall it the same as we did before is by logging in using putty um, we've got here with your username and password for your router um, and enabling the uh, ssh um, then all we do is we can we can see skynet is actually number two we hit number two here that will go into your settings and as you can see here it's got a lot of different options here to customize and then you've got as number 15 you've got uninstall and that can uninstall it for you if you're having any problems um, on there and you've got restart and you've got white lists um, where you can if you're having a, if it's blocking an IP a particular IP address and it's, it shouldn't be you can put that to the white list so um, it won't block that anymore um, as again this is really good information and what's good about this one is Skynet it has like a user interface it adds into the router as well so we'll go and have a look into that now so now we've logged back into the routers uh, GUI and um, basically the user interface here um, of Merlin and we've gone into the firewall tab and then into you'll see a new tab under firewall called Skynet so you can see there I've got statistics so I've updated them just now um, so it'll tell you about how many IPs um, addresses um, and what's been banned what's been blocked inbound and then outbound and it'll give you all this information about what port numbers they are it may look a bit daunting to begin with um, and I know it made me think oh my god I think I'm getting hacked um, not all of them are going to be uh, true and it's going to be um, sometimes it will block genuine uh, websites but it's been put on the list by mistake um, I haven't had any issues so far um, so I have used this for I think about a week now um, without any issues of it blocking anything and I've had to put on but as I've said there is options where you can like we've shown before where you can go into the white list and add IP addresses or web addresses that it's blocking um, that you feel it shouldn't be um, so as you see it does offer you a lot of data and information um, as I've only just reinstalled this again so it will only give you certain information but it will take you to other websites um, where you can view details of uh, the IP address um, the country um, that is blocked for inbound and it believes that it's malicious um, and things like that and then the last 10 up here as well so you can zoom in with uh, in and out of the graphs again this is a lot of information here um, but again, I find um, security is quite good. I've not had any problems with it. Um, so yeah, it's been really good to be honest. And this one, what's good about this is that um, you can you can actually visually see any issues. And if you have do have any problems, again, like I showed you, you can uninstall it quite easily. There's another way you can look on to uh, the system log as well. So if we go to system log down here on our options. Uh, you can see down here on uh, the on here where it's auto refreshing you can see where it says they're blocked inbound and you'll be able to see details of the IP address where it's coming from and uh, as you and you can scroll to the right and it'll give you more information of the destination and everything else so that's just been a quick video just to go through on how installing uh, new features or scripts 
uh, onto Merlin. And as you said, it's quite straightforward. A few of them will probably be a bit more um, complicated, but again, I advise you to have a look through here on the links and see which one would best that will suit for you. Um, as like I said, I've got Skynet and I think there's um, a few others that are quite good, but um, with DNS um, and you can have a look. But anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you found this useful. Have a good day.